Hello collectors and welcome to my review of the SH Monster Arts Mecha King Ghidorah. This Bandai Premium Web Shop exclusive is Tamashi Nation's second attempt at King Ghidorah, following up the Snaptacular first release. How does this one hold up? Is it as breaktastic as the first? Will apologists have to come up with excuses about ham hands this time around? Well, let's take a look and see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. Starting with the looks, it goes without saying Mecha King Ghidorah is pretty awesome looking. Primarily gold and silver, there's not much that could have been screwed up. And thankfully, the smaller paint apps here and there, for the most part, aren't bad. The sculpt is nice, as there are reused parts from the original King Ghidorah, unlike how someone said it was entirely new. And along with the reuse of the mold, though, the soft plastic from the first King Ghidorah makes a return. Starting with the new parts, the mechanical head of Mecha King Ghidorah looks pretty solid, and the paint apps are pretty clean. The translucent parts used for the eyes, as you can see here, that's a fantastic touch. The normal Ghidorah heads are basically the same as the first. They're pretty, but that mouth is pretty sloppy. The detailing on the wings, phenomenal. The small divots and ridges are executed wonderfully, and the red paint is applied well enough that you really wouldn't consider it sloppy. And, moving on to the backs of the wings, you can see there's this nice metallic silver airbrushing on the back of the wings. Looks phenomenal. The chest torso of Mecha King Ghidorah has some great detailing to it. While here, I'd also like to make mention of the tubes at the base of the necks. They're made of soft plastic, sort of like Kiryu's tubes, and they have a pretty solid attachment into the actual body of Mecha King Ghidorah. So when a neck pops off, don't worry about it too much because you're going to be able to pull on it just a little bit, but I wouldn't use too much force because you may unfortunately break it. But don't worry, that's a stable connection there for the tubes. Anyway, the not color timer on the chest is a nice murky plastic, and it looks pretty sweet. Moving on down to the lower portion of Mecha King Ghidorah, you can see the scaling is pretty great here. And the shin guards, they look pretty sweet. You also have that same airbrushed paint to it, which gives it a nice metallic look, which is always appreciated. And you can see here the scales on Mecha King Ghidorah continue to move on throughout the tail, and they're very sharp. And then we get all the way up here to the two new tail tips, which are made of a hard plastic with a red center in the middle there. And they even rotate, which is pretty sweet. So, all in all, Bandai did a great job making Mecha King Ghidorah look really friggin' sweet. In the looks department, I'd say it's a solid A. When it comes to articulation, yeah, you should know what to expect by now. So, first things first with this big buffoon. The heads and the neck. Basically, you just have a whole bunch of ball joints here, going down to where the necks attach onto the body. You can see here, you get some pretty nice movement. You can get Mecha King Ghidorah to look straight up, like so. Get a little bit of movement downwards. Actually, you get a lot of bit of movement. But you got to be careful because at the base, <sighs> the ball joints like to pop off. So you just got to be careful there. And the jaws are on ball joints. Even the mechanical head as you can see here. So if you want to give them a derpy jaw on any of the heads, you can. Just be careful though, because they do like to pop out very easy. And they can be a pain to get back in. And also of note, just like the original King Ghidorah, the tongues do like to move a little bit, but I don't know if there's an actual ball joint in there or if it's just glued in place, because I know some people have snapped off the tongues for the original King Ghidorah. So, unless you absolutely have to move the tongue for some reason, then I wouldn't move it. So, moving on to the wings, we have a hinge, which the wings are actually attached on. See this? Very tight on this one. And for this wing in particular, where it is attached to the body, yeah, the plastic is cracked because it's not attached correctly. Wonderful. And also, the actual base of the joint is on a swivel, so you can move the wings up and down like so. So here's a look of it from the back. As you can see, both move the same. And then just for reference, you can see here the middle neck of Mecha King Ghidorah 
has a much bigger ball joint. So if you were wondering. And of course, that neck has to fall off. Now we move over to the chest of Mecha King Ghidorah, which you'll see in the next section for the accessories. But there are some hinges here for the panels on the chest, which open up for the G Grasper. As you can see here, I believe these are die cast parts. I'm not too sure though. Because, I mean, nothing really feels like die cast on this though. I'm sure there's a particular individual who will say, oh yeah, the whole chest is made of die cast because, you know, insider info. Anyway. As you can see here, this being the torso section, there is a ball joint for the ab crunch, which attaches to King Ghidorah's lower portion of the body, as you can see here. And it's a pretty nice range of movement, but do know that, well, it's very easy to pop off. And what's also pretty cool is the ball joint is actually attached on a swivel hinge combo. So you can see me moving the ball joint around there with my thumb. So you can spin the ball joint around at the base as well as get the ball joint, the ball to be more specific, to actually move around. See me move it there like that. So that's pretty neat. Get some pretty nice movement out of that. But again, soft plastic, so kinda likes to pop off. Moving down, we have the legs for Mecha King Ghidorah. And at the hips, where the thighs attach, we have a ball joint. Pretty much the same range of movement as the normal King Ghidorah. Maybe a little bit more, maybe not, since it's the same sculpt. And then we have ball joint hinge combo here for the knee. So you can spin the shin area around. Then we have ankles, which are ball joints. Same on both sides. And then finally we have the tails, which are similar to the necks, in that we just have ball joints starting from right here, all the way up to the tail tip. And also, soft plastic, so don't expect too much, uh, I guess you could say absurdity, when it comes to posing the tails and keeping them in that pose. I mean, you can sort of do a little twist like I'm doing here, but if you want them both to sort of stay up in the air for a while, well, just, yeah, that should answer your question. So is Mecha King Ghidorah's articulation bad? No. For the design, it pretty much works, and I don't really know what more you'd be expecting from it, but in terms of the materials used, you really need to work Mecha King Ghidorah so this way you can actually get a good pose out of him. Like this one here, yeah, there was about, mm, I'd say, three minutes of cut material to get him in this pose. And then you have the soft plastic, which just, I mean, it's kind of like, come on, guys. Really? Really? I mean, you guys haven't learned by now. So, yeah, the engineering, it's pretty solid, and you're going to get a lot of cool poses, but what the hell? Why, why do we have to have this? So earlier this year, we had Gamera. We had some pretty awesome accessories with him. And now we have Mecha King Ghidorah, and the accessory trend continues. Yay! First up for the accessories, I would like to talk about the Dorats, or the Do-Rats, for the few of you out there who like to call them that. Now, right away I'd like to address a problem. There are some paint issues with these three little guys, which I'll show you up close in a little bit. And I just want to make note of this because it's very disappointing because the promotional pictures show really nice, clean paint applications that look very professional. And... It's very unfortunate that the final product didn't have such great paint application because it's really something Bandai is known for, and seeing them drop the ball like this... Okay, yeah, I get your point. At any rate, craptacular paint application aside, the Dorats are pretty nice, and the sculpt details, they're pretty great. You'd expect something of such small size to just be skimped on entirely, but that's not necessarily the case here, because even though, like I said, the paint is crap, the sculpt's very nice. So, these things actually move, which is another plus for them. You have a basic head swivel, as you can see here, or neck swivel to be correct. Then we have a small hinge for the jaw, on them. Mine was kind of stuck, but as you can see, small movement up and down, not too too much. Wings are on a ball joint, so they can rotate. The thighs are on a swivel. 
but it's very, very tight, so you may have to force yours a little bit or heat it up to get it to move. And then the tail is on a swivel too, but it doesn't really want to move on pretty much any of mine. Oh, there we go. One finally moved. So there you go. Now I have proof that the swivel on the tail actually moves. And just so you actually believe me that the paint is craptacular, you can see that, yeah, all three of them not looking so great. Up next, we have the G-Grip, G-Grasper, the attachment cables, whatever you want to call them. Now, attaching them, it's pretty easy to do. First up, what you need to do is you need to take these four hinged doors on Mecha King Adora's chest, torso, whatever you want to call it, and open them up. And you have this centerpiece right here. You just slowly wiggle out, and there you go. Now Mecha King Ghidorah is ready to go for this. Now, in the box, you get a little separate baggie, and in this baggie, you get a Stage Act 4 support base, you get a Stage Act 4 support arm, and you get these two special butterfly pieces. You know, special butterfly, because I think this is the only time they made them. And... Here's the setup that you have to do. On the bottom of the Act 4 base, you'll have two plugs on the side. Pop them out. Not that hard to do. And you take these special pieces and just slowly work them into the side. Like so. And then you take the Act 4 support arm. You plug it in the center. Now, what is this all for? Well, you get the center claw. Swivels right up here to actually grab Godzilla. And you have these poles here, which feel like they're made out of die cast. What you do, is you got a little hole right there. You plug the Act 4 support arm into. Sort of set it up for Mecha King Ghidorah already. And then you get two smaller claws, which also have that opening and closing mechanism right up here, which is kind of like a swivel or a hinge. Uh, bendy wire for the actual cable, but I would not bend them because it's a web exclusive, and if you snap that wire, good luck getting a replacement. And as you'll notice, there's a hole right there for the claw. All you have to do is just put it on top of the special part, just like so. Smaller ones go on the top, or not, you know, it's your decision. And then you get these medium-sized ones. You get two. Again, bendy wire for the actual cable, which those just plug in on the bottom, like so. And once you have everything set up, you can then take your Mecha King Ghidorah, now that he's prepared for everything, and all you have to do is just line up all the little parts here. Like so. And voila! Mecha King Ghidorah is now using the G-Grip attack thingamabob. But of course, it only looks cool when it's in action. And of course, it is used to capture Godzilla. So you don't necessarily need the stand if you have it in use for Godzilla. Because if you do use the stand, it is very difficult to coordinate everything. So all in all, the accessories for Mecha King Ghidorah, they're pretty great. The Dorats, eh, they could be better in the paint department, but the overall G-Grip system for Mecha King Ghidorah is very nicely done, though you do have to be careful of those bendy wires snapping over time if you constantly flex them over and over and over again. Like you can tell here, I've already bent one of them, which is not that big of a deal. I mean, that's not going to do any real damage to it, but if you're constantly flicking them back and forth, up and down, twisting them this way and that way, not a wise idea. So just be smart and you'll have a lot of fun with this guy. And now everyone's favorite portion of the review, where you can see exactly how big this damn thing is. First up, alongside some Ultra Act Kaiju. Next up, some Ultra Act Ultras. Here, next to some of NECA's specific Rim Kaiju figures. Here, with a nice variety of 6-inch scale Godzilla figures. Here's Mecha King Ghidorah, alongside some random SH Monster Arts. Here he is alongside some of the other larger SH Monster Arts. And finally, what kind of party would it be if we didn't have King Ghidorah alongside Mecha King Ghidorah? You can definitely see that there are some color differences there. And generally speaking, size, 
Well, Mecha King Ghidorah is just bulkier. So, in general, if you're thinking about a good place to put Mecha King Ghidorah on your shelf, just think roughly a little bit bulkier than the original King Ghidorah. So, buy it now, skip it, or wait for a deal. Mecha King Ghidorah looks pretty great, with the gold paint shining wonderfully with a subtle black wash, and the small paint apps and sculpt details popping really nice under the right light. Articulation is nice, and really, the engineering is solid. However, the plastic choice sucks because the damn thing falls apart easily. Yes, you can put it in complicated poses, but just note, chances are a part or two is going to pop off. Accessories are fitting for the character, too, and it's nice to have little add-ons. However, some beams would be appreciated with this release. All in all, Mecha King Ghidorah isn't exactly a $200 figure in my book, but it's pretty nice. Fans of the character will have a great representation in their collection, and it's a marked improvement over the first Ghidorah, I would say, even with the issues I have. With it being a web exclusive, do keep in mind that it won't be around at MSRP for too long because you have a few people who like to prey on you, and they're going to buy it up to flip it at a higher price. If you're on the fence about this guy, I would say go ahead and get it. Yes, there are some issues, but ultimately, it's a beautiful display piece.